so you might be wondering as a developer why why do i need to learn how to talk content i'm i'm code i'm design i'm you know i'm building the websites i don't need to worry about what goes on them that's my client's problem unfortunately as you may have found out it's usually your problem as well uh, i'm friends with a lot of developers and designers and I hear about their woes with clients on a daily basis. So I developed this talk to kind of give you guys a little help on what you need to do to maybe soothe those burns of pain when you have a client that's like, oh yeah, I just, I need a website. And it's like, well, what's gonna be on it? So how many times have you had a project held up because your client hasn't gotten you that content? How many times have you had a project go over your estimates of time or you know, pain involved because the client has no idea what they want for content? How many times have you had to go back and redo significant amounts of work because your client changed their content at the last minute? Can I see some hands? How many times has that happened? Yeah, like all of you. <laughs> I work for a content development company and that's our job to figure that out for your client. You know, they come to us and they say, yeah, we want content for our website. Well, we're the ones who do the work of doing the keyword research and doing the topic research and doing the audience research. You shouldn't have to do that for your client. You're in the business of developing their website, not their content. So this doesn't have to be your reality. There are ways to get around this. So an example, a friend of mine was developing a site and during the mock-up phase of the design, he did a basic wireframe of the homepage layout, something, you know, and he's like, I need an approval of this wireframe of your homepage before we can proceed. I don't want to build this out and have you go, oh no, I don't like that. That's why we wireframe. So he came up with something like this. Standard boxes, lorem ipsum, just to give them an idea of what, would, what it would look like eventually when he built it out. Swear to God, the, con the uh, client said, what do all those boxes and numbers mean? And what's, what's that nonsense text? Not everyone is going to know what lorem ipsum is and not everyone's going to understand what, you know, uh, image size boxes are. Okay, so yeah. So the solution he came upon was to utilize a uh, program called Phil Murray, a custom placeholder script that puts images of Bill Murray in standard image sizes on your site mockup. Okay, so, so now we've got some images, right? Okay, this looks more like an actual website. We're good, right? It was great, it was quirky, it was easy to do, and the client, I kid you not, responded with, are all those pictures of Bill Murray gonna stay that way? <laughs> I don't even remember what the site was about, but obviously it would not be Bill Murray. So, yes, it, and the, the spiral of depression with this project goes deeper. Custom placeholders, whether it be Bill Murray or kittens, and believe me, there are dozens of them out there, they just don't cut it when it comes to identifying the content types and spaces and sizes or even getting your clients to understand what content is. And that's where we have our first problem here. The blank slate paralyzes clients. And I thank my friend Karina for giving me that quote. They don't, first of all, the word content, it's a word that they don't understand. Um, you know, we as developers and designers and content creators, we understand what that word means. It means your images, your text, your videos, whatever. They hear content and they, it doesn't make sense, it's jargon. So you need to break it down into the actual things you need. Um, one of the things we do when we take on a new client for content production is we have them fill in an onboarding questionnaire uh, talking about what uh, their clientele is or who they're trying to reach, their audience, age ranges, anything that they know. 90% of the time this comes in half filled, maybe not filled at all. We kind of have to do a lot of guesswork, but eventually we get around it. But that's us, we should be doing this, not you. So if you get a content onboarding questionnaire, that at least gives you an idea of, are they gonna have a lot of images? Are they gonna have videos? Um, how much of this do they already have developed? Uh, ask for their access to their existing assets or someone in charge of producing those assets. A lot of the times, I work for primarily lawyers, and a lot of the times they have a marketing person, so we grab them real quick and we're like, hey, where are your logos? Where are your um, image files of your staff? Where are your building pictures? Uh, any you know, content that you've already written? Do you have any white papers? Do you have any case analysis? You know, Stuff like that. Get that as soon as you can, because that at least gives you an idea of what they already have and what they might be producing later on after you build the site. So you might get answers like this from your clients. 
oh, yeah, my content's probably gonna be a picture gallery, man, maybe some videos, or isn't that your job? No, it's not. And what about, I'm sh not sure yet, I'll, I'll finish it out when, once you figure out the site. Well, what if they want you know, a nice picture gallery? You didn't build that into their blog part, so now you've gotta go back and redo your work. Or what if you design it for videos and then they're like, oh, well, we talked to the video production company and their estimates were way too high, so we're not gonna do videos. Well, now you've just wasted your whole time building out a video you know, viewer for them. You want an answer like this. I want a full image background that stays when you scroll down. I'm gonna be using a lot of pictures in my blogs and posting at least once a week, so you know you wanna big out a nice, uh, very easily organized blog roll. And I might have a logo later, but not right now. So you know that they might have assets in the future. So that at least gives you a little bit of work to, you know, stuff to work with. Um, offer some assistance. Uh, so one of the tactics I've seen is that you can provide some basic relevant filler content and encourage them to make it their own. Uh, some of the designers that I work with, they're also bloggers on their own, so they'll write in like some basic homepage stuff with the limited amount of knowledge they know about their clientele and say, hey, look, this is what is the kind of stuff you should have on your homepage, but I suggest that you go in and make it your own and put your own message on there. That at least kickstarts them to think about, okay, what do I really want my website to say? Uh, another thing you can do is work with a creator friend and have them make some samples for that client. Uh, I have a lot of my developer friends come to me and say, hey, could you just like work up some dummy content for them and show them kind of what they should be doing? Uh, or, you know, a designer, hey, can you give them some mock-ups of different logo ideas so at least just get the juices flowing and get them thinking in this sort of mentality? Um, to help them get inspired, if you've been a developer for any length of time, you know your job ends up being a whole lot more than code. Um, I've heard stories of my friends who end up acting like business coaches, helping their clients develop a business model while building their site. Um, if that's not above and beyond, I don't know what is. You don't really have to do that. You're in the job of building their website, not telling them how to run their business. Uh, one of the things that I find is helpful is to find sites with similar goals or uses in your portfolio. So if they're building a website that sells funky pairs of socks, show them other websites uh, that sell socks or similar items and show them how they do it, you know? Um, if any of you are fans of MailChimp, they started their own web store a little while ago, Freddie and Company, and one of the first things they sold were socks. And I thought they had a very good uh, selling strategy for that. So find sites that you see that are, are successful and show them to your client and say, you know, this is kind of the path you should walk. Let's help make this you uniquely and not, you know, just be a carbon copy. Because sometimes you'll get the client that says, yes, I want exactly that. And you're like, no, 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 that's not cool. Um, show them some sites that you think have great visuals or write a good block of text. Not everyone is a poet online. You'll see some websites with horribly boring copy or horribly jargon-filled copy. Um, as a legal writer, my job is to remove that jargon and put it in layman's terms. And when you find a website that just talks really well or has a very interesting way to display information, like a huge long blog post, I've seen some very creative layouts and I wish I had links to them, but... Um, give them homework. You can say, hey, look, I want you to at least give a shot at writing this and um, you know, I have a creator friend, I'll have them look over it and give you some pointers, things like that. At the very least, it doesn't take a lot of effort to at least help get your client inspired. And the more inspiration they get, hopefully the more forthcoming they'll be with the answers that you need about how to finish building their website. Um, so at the end of all this, you should at least be coaching your client along the way to give them the tools they need to get started so that you can get the tools you need to get started on their project. Uh, and if you're like me, you probably have cats all over your desk that are impeding your work, but you don't need your client also impeding your work. Um, so I think both of us are coming up to do questions now. Uh, that is the link to all these slides. It should be live by now. <laughs>